Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be working on this engine again. So like I said, this is a 7.3 engine. It's out of a 2001 truck. So same concept as the OBS with some minor differences. But we're going to go ahead and cover this project as well. Today we're going to be putting on some CNC fab high pressure oil lines. <clears throat> CNC fab has a pretty good reputation. I've used a high pressure oil pump from them. Clay's a pretty good guy. He's always been very, very helpful. I have nothing bad to say about him. So we're going to go ahead and put his high pressure oil pump lines on this truck. So you might be saying, why, why replace these lines? You know, that doesn't look like they're leaking or anything like that. Well, the Super Duty trucks have these ST feet, STC fittings. So you can see they, they wiggle, you know, they move around. Well, these fittings suck to get off. They suck to service. They make it very difficult to do troubleshooting on the heads and the oil system. So since with the fuel bowl's out, everything's open, the engine's out of the truck, we're gonna go ahead and change those out. So this is also not really a preventative maintenance, but it makes it easier to do your diagnosis if you have an issue. Per se, if you have a high pressure oil pump problem and you wanna test or deadhead the pump and check the pump, well, you can't check the pump with these STC fittings because you have to take the fitting out of the head or you have to adapt over up here, take this out, take this fitting out of the head. And it's just, it's, it's a hassle. It just takes that much longer to diagnose a high pressure oil problem with these lines. These lines are also notorious for leaking and we're just gonna cut them out of the equation completely. So let's go ahead and open this box up. So you've got a fitting bag and you have two lines. So for a 99 to 03 truck, these lines are the same length. So very nice lines, stainless steel braided. Um, if you want, you can put a loom over these that will help um, keep anything rubbing against this from um, wearing wires, hoses, anything like that. The factory one has loom on it. You can see it's very well destroyed. However, so if you flip this bag over, let me get this a little closer here for you. There's numbers on here telling you where these fittings go. So let's pull one of these fittings out of the bag, and you can see that there is a number five on this one. So number five corresponds to Super Duty, Passenger, and Crossover. So we don't have a crossover on here. The crossover is an extra, so we won't be using the crossover on here. Um, it's not generally needed. It's something that people like to install. So we'll pull all these fittings out here and leave this bag off to the side. So let's see, where's number one? Let's start with number one. So we have two, three, and five. So here's number one, number two, number three. And since this is not an OBS, we don't have a number four. And we have a number five, which is over here. So five goes to the head here. And then number three would go to the driver's head here. Number two would go to the back port of the high pressure oil pump. And then number one would be the front port. So front would be towards the front of the engine. So let's go ahead and get these off of here. So we're going to go ahead and grab a wrench, loosen these fittings up. I'm going to put some paper towels in here so that I don't make a mess over this nice clean engine. So before I clean this up, I'm going to show this to you. See all that dirt? So I wire brushed this whole engine, but I couldn't get that dirt because there's a, a boss in around the port. So with the line in the way, it makes it difficult to get to that dirt. And then I was talking about spring checks. That's this little spring right there. So we'll pull that spring out of there. So I'll get this cleaned up real quick. 
we'll get back to putting this line on. Okay, we've got that cleaned up a lot better. So we can continue taking this off of here. Once I get this line off of here and get the new fitting put on, I'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit better. But at least at this point, we're not going to be knocking any dirt into the port there. It's the last thing that you want to do because this goes directly to your injectors, which can cause you to have injector problems, which is also very, very bad. I've had it happen to me personally. It was a disaster. It made my life a living hell. So there we are. All the old lines are off of there. First thing we're going to do is refer to your numbers again. So we want number three. So number three. Once again, a little bit of lube on this overing. Go ahead and put that inside the head here. So I've got some needle nose pliers here. Let's see if we can get this camera to look into where I want to see here. So you can see those springs in there. This toe hooks a little bit, this hooks a little bit in the way here, but you will take these springs out. So that's these springs right here. I'll just set them down in there for now. So that one's out too. So here's this spring. So, let's get this last one here, which has eluded me at the moment. There it is. There it is. So, this is your first, first one here. So, the O-ring on this side, this is your high-pressure oil pump side. This is the side for the head. Or, I'm sorry, not for the head. For the high pressure oil line. So a little bit of lubrication on the O-ring. And whenever I had mentioned the 680 locking compound, it would go on these threads if you chose. I don't put the compound on these. I've never needed to. I've never had these come loose. Sorry, I'm standing in your way. This is a little bit funky to get to at the moment because it's so close to the timing cover. So since I still have a little bit of lubrication on my hand here, I'm going to go ahead and do this O-ring too. So that one's now ready. So you take your new fitting and these are what you torque to 28 foot pounds. Now you can't obviously torque this one because it's a wrench. I do not have a torque wrench with an open end. And as you can see, not three quarter. So let's grab the right one. So this first fitting here is 11 sixteenths. And if you work on your own vehicles much, so this is 28 foot pounds, you know about 
what that is for pressure. It's a learned thing. And then you take your number two fitting and put it in the back of the pump. So all of these other fittings are able to be indexed in their correct way. And your jam nut on this is also 11 sixteenths. So that'll be 11 sixteenths for these other two as well. Now, you want to take your line and you'll thread it on here. Get it snug. Now this guy is going to go however it needs to go. With the Super Duty, these are kind of finicky. So you got to make sure that you route this correctly. So that you can route it like this. And I'll show this to you. And then you take your other one. Get it started over here. And then it moves the way you need it to move. So you can freely index these to put them where you need them to be. So this isn't going to work with the fuel bowl right here. So this one needs to flip around like this and come down here. So what I like to do is I like to get these fittings snug by hand. Give them a wiggle as you tighten them down a little bit there. That way they're seated nice. And at that point, since you have all these fittings loose, these fittings can relax. And that way you don't put a bind on this hose. So let me go ahead and show you how these look over here. So as you can see, this line comes out and around, and then this line comes up and goes up here. So you can move this fitting however you wish because we haven't tightened down the jam nut that's underneath. So the only fitting that we've currently tightened up is this fitting that goes into the high pressure oil pump, not the line to fitting, but the fitting to pump. <clears throat> so that one gets tightened up first. Now you can come back and tighten these jam nuts up on all of these other fittings. So this one, you have to run it this way, the way that they give you the fittings, because it has to come straight out. You can't come straight out and then hard bend over to here. The, the line won't let it happen. So the other thing we need to do is I need to put the bracket back on here for the air intake, make sure it's not gonna interfere with this line. Okay, so we have the bracket here and it slides onto these studs. So the only thing I would suggest doing when you install these is you want to move this, take your line here, and you're going to want to push it down a little bit. Get it kind of close to this lifting eye because that'll give you a little bit more room for all of your electrical connections because they come up and over this line. So it, it doesn't take much. You don't have to hold it there too much, but it that's probably the better way to do this. We'll find out for sure once we get the wiring harness put all, all back in this. But this is your install for these lines. So tighten up your jam nuts once you get your fitting where it needs to be. And you can see that line stays there now. It doesn't want to move. So like I said, this one here is 11 sixteenths. And I do believe that these are a little bit smaller, which they are. So we'll grab a different wrench for that. And these are five eighths. Make sure you leave enough room here for your hose clamp and your intake boot. Snug these down 
and these are supposed to be 23 foot pounds. Now we'll go ahead and we'll tighten up these lines here. And these are 11 sixteenths. And these are supposed to be 21 foot pounds. And you've just installed the CNC high pressure oil lines. So very simple install, obviously much, much easier out of the truck. However, you can do it in the truck. It's not difficult. Makes it a lot easier with your fuel bowl out of the way. You obviously have to remove your intake tube bracket, which is this here, because it will also be kind of in your way but you can work around it if you so wish. Like I said, I'm opened this up really well so you guys could see what was going on here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish assembling this engine. Not too detail oriented with that, so we're just gonna go ahead and put everything back together and cover some stuff that may be a little bit more tedious. So thanks for watching. I hope that this guy, this helps you guys out in installing these lines and how to route them and your um, fitting locations and how this should look. So we'll get a good look here at the finished product. And you can see here, there's, there's room for the lifting eye down through here. You should get enough room here for your wiring harness on the 7.3 to pass through there because <clears throat> the OBS one would just drape over, but the OBS one is a little bit different as far as routing and lines. If you have a high pressure oil crossover, it would come back here to these ports here and cross over from head to head. I don't feel the need for the high pressure crossover, so we don't go, we don't do those on these trucks. That's just my opinion. But thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you like these videos that I'm producing, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next one.